So in a previous video, I mentioned that Tiki was a more balanced version of Young Link from Hyrule Warriors. And I was wrong. Oh boy, was I wrong. So this video here is to just showcase how ridiculous Tiki can be. The gear that I'm using right now is by no means optimized, but this is a level 50 difficulty mission on the Dark Pontifex history mode map where you can unlock the Brave Tome. To unlock this mission, you have to complete at least two prior maps, and there's also a third map that you can also do with an S rank to get the Silver Stone, which will make beating these maps with Tiki a lot faster. The nice thing about this mission is that if you complete it with the S rank, you unlock the Brave Tome, which is the A rank for the Tome weapon class, and possibly the strongest weapon you can get for Robin. As it happens, Robin plays an important role in this route, since she has the Solidarity skill, which increases Tiki's damage even further. Now, the general strategy that I've done for this map and for this overall route is to get one of your strongest units to babysit the Allied Commander on the right half of the map, and then you have your strongest Axe user to take care of the fortress on the southeast. Meanwhile, the stars of the show, Tiki and Robin, will be sent to the southwest. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, we're using Robin because Solidarity is her personal character skill, and is therefore cheaper to afford on her. The way the character skills work is that the owner of the skill crest only has to spend silver materials to unlock it for themselves, while another character that does not own it must spend gold materials to enjoy the benefits. So we're going to start off the route in the bottom left corner of the map, where there's going to be a jar that'll fully restore our warrior gauge, meaning a full awakening gauge for Tiki. Uh, just so you guys know, in terms of specs, uh, the Tiki that I'm using right now has like, I think a I think a 3 star Silverstone, I believe, and the, in terms of skills, she's using Ryoma's Astra skill, which is really, really useful because it speeds up the attacks of the user, and it's highly recommended for basically every character, so you're actually going to be farming Ryoma a lot with his supports. We also have Lucina's Awakening skill, which increases the overall damage of the Awakening mode, which is perfect for Tiki's playstyle. And finally, just as a bit of a bonus, we have Strength Up, which is Lissa's personal skill. Now, as you can see, Lissa is also farmable on this map as well. And, uh, yeah, like this whole route, you don't have to worry too much about clearing the entire map. You just have to worry about getting the captains. Now, there are four captains that you'll have to deal with. And the nice thing about this is that this is a fairly reliable source of getting the gold materials for these four characters. Uh, I'm talking about Lissa, Camilla, Kada, and Elise. So if you're looking for those ones and you don't want to farm the supports, then this is another place to go for it. Or you can actually do both, where you can have like Elise following Tiki along with the Solidarity skill, and then you can get a chance of increasing uh, her materials for fighting her in this map, but also for her support conversation. That's nice. Now, the button combination for Tiki is literally the same for Young Link and Hyrule Warriors. And for those of you guys that did not play that game, uh, that is three regular attacks followed by a strong attack. You know that it's the forward torpedo and the flex to nuke her enemies. This has really, really good damage and can usually put most enemies into a stun gauge and often breaks it all in the same combo. It's very, very useful. And it also increases like the high amount of warrior gauge that you can gain from it. Now, one of the things to note about this particular map, again, we're not really aiming for looking at unlocking all the fortresses. We're not even really looking at all the objectives. All we want to do is just go straight for captain because it takes about less than seven minutes with the setup that I'm using right now to beat it and still get an S rank. So yeah, if you ever like just really look at your map, one confusing thing that the game doesn't really show you is that the bunch of KOs in the bottom right corner of the of the screen, that's actually not the total amount of KOs that you need to get the S rank. Usually you need like 2,000 KOs, but what you have to do is you have to open up your map and then see how many soldiers overall have been killed uh, from the enemy side. So that's one thing to keep track of. Like, I wish they could make it more simplified where it would be on the screen so we don't have to pause every single time, but, you know. Now, one of the things about this map, though, is that since we're not going after all the fortresses, um, it's actually better not to, and it's easy to resist the temptation to do so, because most of the fortresses just have the one Pegasus Knight. Um, you don't really have to worry about taking the entire map, since, yeah, we're just jumping from captain to captain, 
and that's usually just looking for density most of the time. That that's basically how Tiki plays. You look for density, and you, like, if need be, then you open those jars. Uh, the axe user should make short work of the fortress by themselves anyway, but if not, like, you could still grind and level up that person. Now, Kata here is the biggest challenge on the run since she goes straight for the allied commander, and to make matters worse, she has high defense and HP. So when you're in dragon form, it's best to stick on her as much as you can while still reserving a warrior gauge to do the dual strike special. So if you don't kill her outright, don't worry, it's because she is the most immediate danger that you'll be facing, so any time st spent on her is time well spent. Now, theoretically, what you could also do was bring a bow user like Takumi or Sakura and give her this, like, give him or her the solidarity skill to make this a lot faster, but that would also mean leaving Dragon Road, so, yeah, if, really what you want to do is just play around with that, because having a bow user or someone with an anti- Pegasus Knight ability, it would probably make this process a lot faster. Now, positioning comes into play in the corridors, since Dragon Form's critical attacks could potentially fill up two or more bars if you have enough crowd density. The tricky part about this mission is that the forts themselves only house a single Pegasus Knight. As I said earlier, theoretically, you could have a strong bow user with solidarity to replace Robin for this run, but that would also mean leaving Dragon Farm, so again, just experiment with that. Just so you guys know, all of the jars that we're finding on this map are guaranteed to drop, and the ones that we open up are the ones that actually fully restore whatever gauge it is. So if it's a blue jar, it fully restores Awakening. If it's a yellow jar, it fully restores the Warrior gauge. We're just going to take out this fort captain. I don't think this is a required one at all, but I like to just fight this one and build up whatever meter I can get a chance of getting that. And then I just book it all the way to the north, getting as much meter as I can for Elisa's room. Now, what happens here is that I actually kills the captains with the final animation, and they, some of them dropped awakening tonics, which is why they kind of restored my meters really, really quickly, so that was useful. The good thing about this fight is that Elise is a lot easier to beat than Kaida. So once you beat here, you can basically consider this mission over. Again, just continuously staying on the captains with the um, the three regular attacks and the strong attack, or as they call it, a, a combo three, I believe. Or may, no, I think it's a combo four. I actually kind of forgot what the terminology is for this game. But yeah, you just have to stay on top of them most of the time, and you can just muscle through them. That's the beauty of using Tiki.